Bon après-midi, mesdames et messieurs. Um, buenas tardes, señoras y señores. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome. Uh, my name is Sangan Kim. This is uh, IKO's 13th Air Navigation Conference, and this is um, our day seven, 28th session of the Sky, Sky Talk series. For those who are here, uh, I'd like to remind you that uh, this comes to you live. So um, you get to hear um, all this information firsthand. Not from the news, not from books, but uh, you, you're here. If you have not had the opportunity to, to see all of them, I, I ask that you go on YouTube, you type uh, IKO Sky Talks, and you'll have the full list of, uh, of sessions that we have for you uh, from uh, industry leaders and from uh, government. Now, um, today's topic, uh, Dunia Abud, Associate, Associate uh, Analyst Officer at the Integrated Aviation an analyst section of the Air Navigation Bureau here at AKO will be talking about the Civil Aviation Authority Human Resources Toolkit, which is referred to as CAA HRT. Now, this uh, set of tools is aimed to help states, and more specifically, civil aviation authorities, in order to better estimate numbers of inspectors needed for safety oversight of their aviation section. Sector, sorry. So if your CA is having a hard time understanding its needs in terms of safety oversight inspectors, well, you're in the right place. So we'll have our uh, specialists talk to you. So please help me uh, welcoming Dunia Bud for her presentation. Hello, everybody. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for the introduction. So allow me to start by presenting briefly the outline of uh, my presentation today. So first, I'll briefly introduce the background uh, of the Civil Aviation Authority Human Resource Toolkit so you understand the context in which it was created. Then I'll go through the toolkit's components, the benchmarking tool, the manpower planning tool, the organizational structure library, and the integrated training roadmap for inspectors process. And I'll finish with a few remarks to keep in mind while using this toolkit. I hope this presentation is worth your while. So let's get started. Uh, as uh, you probably, most of you know, IKEO conducts audits under the Universal Safety Oversight Audit Program, uh, USOAP. Uh, it contains a number of questions referred to as protocol questions or PQs. And the outcome of these PQs usually are either satisfactory or unsatisfactory. So right here, uh, I have the results for uh, PQ 2053, which asks, has the state established and implemented a mechanism to ensure that each safety oversight entity, investigation, authority has sufficient personnel to meet its respective national and international obligations? Well, what you see here is that it's true that a couple of states do, 64 in total, and uh, 121 states still do not have such a mechanism in place. Uh, if you look at Asia Pacific, you have 25 states that don't. And in uh, the Western and Central African area, you have 14 states that don't. These are just a few examples. So the effective implementation score, the global effective implementation score for this PQ is of 34.59%, which is pretty low. So this is why well, you see that USOP uh, audits show that states don't have a methodology uh, to determine uh, their staffing needs. Uh, and this is also why states have asked uh, for guidance on resourcing and structuring of their CAAs. Uh, and uh, that uh, the CAHR toolkit was uh, previewed initially at the 39th assembly and responds really to the needs expressed by states on the scaling of their staff, in particular regarding how many inspectors are needed to address their oversight responsibilities. So an expert group was formed, uh, comprising of uh, ICAO uh, and also uh, member states, uh, to uh, start developing a guidance and a methodology to resource and structure the CAA inspectorate. Uh, so the current tool is a little bit uh, complex and for that reason uh, we um, 
have uh, also put into place a roadmap to accompany so the Civil Aviation Authority interested in using this tool from uh, the point zero where they don't have enough inspectors to uh, the point where they do. And that we'll talk a little bit later in uh, this presentation. So uh, this uh, CAHR toolkit, where do you find it? It's on ISTARS. Uh, ISTARS stands for Integrated Safety Trend Analysis and Reporting System. And it's a web-based system on the ICAO Secure portal uh, where you can find web applications that generate different types of uh, safety efficiency and risk analyses. So there are three uh, self-assessment tools that are offered uh, to CAAs in this uh, CAHR toolkit. The first one is uh, the benchmarking tool that allows states uh, to compare their inspectorate resources to those of other states. The second one is the manpower planning tool um, that uh, CAAs can use to estimate the number of inspectors appropriate to the size of and scope of their aviation industry. And uh, last but not least, you have the organizational structure library that CAAs can refer to uh, for guidance uh, material to consider alternatives to improve uh, and enhance the way they uh, uh, organize uh, their CAAs. So let's start with the benchmarking tool. Uh, this benchmarking tool, uh, it helps CAAs compare their inspectorate levels against other states with similar operating environments. It's a benchmarking information that can be used uh, really as a starting point to determine the adequacy of the state's inspector resources. Uh, how to interpret the results? So essentially, uh, we conducted a study at IKEO and it turned out that there were really three uh, things that uh, uh, the number of inspectors uh, was the most closely correlated to. Uh, the first one was the number of operators. The second one was the uh, aircraft models. And the third one was the number of aerodromes. So there are obviously other factors uh, that can affect the numbers of uh, CAAs, uh, of inspectors, sorry, such as the geographical size of a state, but these could not really be taken into account in this um, application. So essentially for three areas, uh, operations, airworthiness and aerodromes, the graph will show you a distribution of uh, states within your same category and uh, it will show you how many inspectors uh, they have and then you can compare yourself. So here I use an example of one state and we'll go through uh, the graphs for uh, all three areas. Uh, so for the area of operations, uh, what you see is that the state really falls uh, in the range of uh, states that have between 7 and 11 operators. So for states in this range, what this graph tells us is that 85% of states have more than or at least 7 inspectors and that on average states have 15 inspectors. So what does that mean? Well, uh, it means that the state is expected to have around 15 inspectors in the area of operations and a minimum of seven. For the area of airworthiness, same thing. Since the state oversees between nine and 12 aircraft models, it is expected to, that the state have around five inspectors or no less than three. And finally, for the area of Aerodromes, since the state oversees less than five aerodromes, it's expected to have around six inspectors and no less than three. So what is this tool not? It's not a way to determine uh, the number of inspectors needed. So you really have to keep in mind that uh, the information provided here uh, is of a general nature and that the purpose of this tool is just for states to benchmark their current numbers of inspectors with those of other states. We have the manpower planning tool that actually does the real calculations, which enable you to have a proper estimate of the number of inspectors that you need. So second uh, is the organizational structure library. Uh, this library contains a growing list of case studies of civil aviation authorities. And because the operating environment uh, that shape the way CAAs are structured are diverse in nature, it was determined that a good approach would be to showcase how selected states choose to organize their CAAs. 
So to this end, ICAO conducts interview with selected states that have demonstrated sound organizational standards and practices as demonstrated through their high effective implementation scores. And the outcome of the interview is a report that includes a description and the rationale of the CAA's organizational structure. The way we go about with this project is that the report is coordinated with and approved by the CAAs concerned and its final version is uploaded on the ICAO Secure portal as part of the CAA Human Resources suite of guidance and tools. The idea here is to expose in the report not only how a number of selected states um, uh, or civil aviation authorities uh, with uh, sound organizational structures are ultimately structured, but also to understand really the why, so the rationale behind the way they, they're organized. Uh, so really, um, this uh, report is divided in a number of uh, parts. Uh, so there's an introduction that provides an overview and the historical context behind the CAA uh, that is uh, being exposed. Then we get into the heart of the subject, which is a detailed description of divisions, services, units, etc. within the organization with, when applicable, the rationale behind such an organizational structure. And finally, we also discuss resources, type rated inspectors, aerodrome and ANS inspectors, and the delegation of safety oversight or the outsourcing mechanisms within the scope of ICAO annexes are discussed. Sometimes also the report uh, mention uh, overlaps or gaps uh, or what issues uh, that a CAA can be aware of, and if it is the case, how it deals with these issues to resolve them. Now, let's go to the core of this uh, CAA HR toolkit, which is the manpower planning tool. Uh, it's designed to help states quantify the inspector resources uh, that they need for their operating environment, it also includes a uh, basic risk-based surveillance approach uh, for surveillance activities. Uh, ICAO over time uh, will collect uh, the man-hour data uh, to improve uh, the current version of the tool. And also uh, another information, it's really designed to small to medium-sized states who uh, are really in need of a methodology uh, to have a better uh, understanding of their needs in terms of inspectors. So uh, how does this tool work? It, it takes into account a number of assumptions. The first one is that it assumes that inspectors address certification, surveillance and aircraft oversight. Um, so these are the activities. Over time, we will add other types of activities. It also assumes uh, that there is an overhead. So what is the concept of overhead? Well, the job of an inspector uh, may include work that is not directly related to uh, safety oversight. So this can include administrative work, such as the filing of reports, uh, contributions to rural development, international work, uh, time to travel for surveillance activities, and so on and so forth, you name it. Uh, so to simplify manpower calculations, this tool asks for an estimated percentage of such overheads to be added to any manpower calculation. For example, uh, if a particular surveillance task requires 20 man hours to complete with an overhead of 20%, the total man hours uh, that are planned for that task will be calculated at 24 man hours. The next uh, notion that is used in this tool is the notion of man hours and FTEs. So man hours, I think it's pretty self-explanatory, but FTEs, what do we mean by FTEs? So we refer uh, to as FTEs as the number of staff allocated to each function in terms of full-time equivalents. So an FTE is the ratio of the total number of paid hours by the number of working hours in a normal week period. And that ratio uh, units uh, or the FTE units um, are equivalent to employee working full time. In simple words, 
one FTE is equivalent to one employee working full time. Now, uh, it uh, also uh, covers a number of areas for now. Uh, operations, airworthiness, personnel licensing, aerodromes and air navigation services. Um, it uses the notion of multipliers uh, to address the need uh, to increase surveillance based on different factors. Uh, for example, from a risk-based perspective, uh, let's say a fleet size, your surveillance activities won't be the same if you have a small or uh, a large fleet. Uh, or even if your compliance level is uh, high or low or medium, you will want to uh, conduct more or less surveillance activities. That's what modifies fires are here for. So in essence, modifiers affect the surveillance numbers, uh, but they change according to the type of organization. Uh, for example, fleet size will be a modifier for surveillance uh, of large aircraft operators, but it's not going to be uh, the case uh, or it's not going to be a modifier for uh, maintenance organizations. Uh, so this manpower planning tool also uh, provides um, a default man hour values for the different activities based on uh, so um, a South American study that has been conducted. So essentially, it's really a default profile that you can use as reference when you are using the tool. It helps you with the use of the tool. So how is the manpower planning tool set up? It's set up in the following way. So first, it's going to ask you for information about your industry so that it understands how your industry is structured. So here, a state can describe the structure of the industry and the system for each type of industry sector, air operators, maintenance, organizations, aerodromes, etc., and introduce the number of inspectors uh, uh, or inspections uh, that they currently have into the system. Once the industry structure is clearly defined, the tool will calculate the number of man hours needed for the initial grant of approvals um, and also for surveillance activities. As the user goes into the calculations uh, to estimate how many hours are needed for each operator, he will get uh, the number of inspectors needed. And at the end of the calculations, the tool will give a summary that includes for each area the sum of all man hours uh, for certification, surveillance and aircraft oversight activities um, and uh, the applicable FTEs needed. So uh, how is manpower calculated? It's pretty straightforward. Uh, for certification activities, uh, we multiply the number of activities with the man hours spent for each activity, and we divide uh, this number by the yearly man hours per inspector. For surveillance activities, same principle, except that we add the concept of multipliers because surveillance activities are done on an ongoing basis, whereas uh, certification activities will be done only once, and you can't really... Um, know how many uh, certification activities you are going to conduct in your state in, for the following year, whereas surveillance activities you do know. So there are a few things you know to remember is that the manpower planning tool is uh, a tool that provides an estimate number, not the number of inspectors that you need. It estimates. Uh, and uh, there are many ways that you can use to calculate uh, the manpower planning tool. Uh, or, I mean, sorry, your, your manpower uh, in terms of inspectors, uh, this is just one of them. So states, uh, bigger states, uh, for example, they usually have a, a methodology that is a little bit perhaps more complex and that is better able to reflect the realities on the ground for their specific state. Uh, here, what we propose is really a basic uh, tool that is uh, like a starting point that a, a state that has really uh, trouble finding the appropriate methodology for the estimate uh, number of inspectors will find useful. So uh, here, what you see and uh, is the Integrated Training Roadmap for Inspectors, or ITRI. 
we designed this process because we realized that some states will need uh, support or some sort of assistance for the effective use of the manpower planning tool, which is a pretty complex tool uh, because it tries to take into account uh, the complexity of the operating environment of a state. So we have come up with this detailed pro process to accompany the state in every single step of the way. So first we select the state uh, that doesn't have sufficient safety oversight inspectors according to PQ 2.053. There are other PQs that also address the same questions but they are more specific to a different area. We can also use these. If a state is looking to uh, enhance the way they uh, uh, select their ins number of inspectors for a specific area. Uh, so once the state is selected, uh, we ask that they nominate a focal point who will be in charge of uh, coordinating the gathering of data necessary uh, for the use of the manpower planning tool. So we uh, designed a checklist that uh, helps the state uh, gather all that data that is necessary. Uh, because without this data gathered, we cannot use the manpower planning tool. So the state has more or less one month uh, to start uh, collecting all that data. Once uh, it has done so, we conduct an on-site assistance mission that is uh, from five to six days, uh, depending on the needs of the states. And this, uh, during this on-site mission, what we will do is that we will um, first uh, finish uh, uh, collecting the data necessary, and secondly, use the manpower planning tool. So once, with actually, with th th this assistance mission would, will be conducted with uh, uh, the help of an expert uh, that will pr probably be a regional officer. Uh, and during this ongoing uh, site, uh, on site assistance mission, uh, the state will finalize the collection of data, estimate the number of inspectors needed using the tool, and interpret the results based on the realities on the ground. Uh, so compare to the current situation, uh, de determine a recruitment plan. So how many inspectors do you have versus how many do you need? And start really drafting uh, what we call an HR status report. Uh, in that HR status report, you also have uh, information on whether uh, uh, the state will need to uh, provide additional training to uh, inspectors that are working uh, in that CAA or uh, to new inspectors that will be hired. So um, once uh, it is determined whether the state needs a training solution or not, uh, the state may have to conduct um, a training needs analysis or assessment uh, that uh, will be completed with the help of uh, ICAO as well, but remotely. And what is good about uh, this training needs assessment is that it's going to um, really give a very, very clear and precise understanding of the training needs. Uh, for inspectors in the different areas in that state. And um, so es essentially, uh, a clear training needs will be established and uh, perhaps also there will be a need to select a training solution from ICAO uh, or the GAT network, or maybe there will also be a need to develop a training solution if none exists yet. From there, the state can engage in training and uh, recruiting uh, processes uh, and have a sufficient number to ultimately have a sufficient number of uh, competent uh, inspectors. So we count a period of three months uh, for the production of the final report. So from the start of the project to the end in three months, the state should have sufficient competent inspectors. So before I finish this presentation, uh, let me uh, just uh, share with you a couple of remarks. So again, uh, there are many ways that states can use to calculate their manpower. Uh, and the manpower planning tool is just one of them. 
Uh, it's intended to be a basic uh, generic planning tool and to help states that really don't have a mechanism in place to uh, engage in such a process. Um, eventually, the state can uh, choose to develop a little bit more complex tool based on this one or choose to continue using that tool, but it's really to be used periodically uh, to always have a sufficient number of inspectors ultimately. This tool, uh, so it helps calculate the number of inspector resources, but not the resources that you need for other parts of your CAA, for example, rulemaking or support staff or data analysts. Uh, currently, it covers uh, organization certification and surveillance, aircraft oversight, but uh, eventually in the future, we will add more activities. Why is this method useful? Uh, it's useful because it recognizes that a lot of inspectors' work is focused on work that is done for approved organizations and individuals. Our first assistance missions uh, will be conducted in states in Western and Central Africa and also Southeast Asia. Uh, at this point in time, we're still determining what uh, states really need the help. So this is the end of my presentation. If you have any questions or remarks, I'll be happy to um, respond to them now. Or uh, you can always also feel free to contact me directly at my email. And uh, to finish, we are doing all of this uh, to leave no country left behind. Thank you very much for your attention. Any